Hey guys, this is the MGX Hypergo and this is also an MGX Hypergo but this one is a clone and that one is the original but what's the difference? In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Stay tuned! So guys, in today's video we are going to compare this car against that one. So this is an original MGX Hypergo and this one is a clone. So this one is more affordable than that one. But what's the difference? Well, in this video I am going to tell you everything that you will need to know. So the first thing, of course, you know, appearance wise there are some differences between these cars. But besides the color art, you know, and every, the stickers and everything, yeah, skip that part. But if you just look at the body itself, it is almost identical. Of course, you know, the, the dimensions are slightly off and also the wheelbase is slightly off to each other but still these two cars are almost similar with the body style but that's not very important you know it's more like the electronics and the handling and there's a lot of differences between those two cars but let's have a close look at the transmitters first here are the two transmitters that belongs to the car. So this one is from the MGX and this one is from the clone version. Both of them will do the job of course, but I prefer this one. So this one has got a better feel to it, it feels more sturdy than that one and also you know it's more capable of one-hand driving. If you're going to do the one-hand driving with the MGX, your thumb will hit this little knob over there and I think that's a bit annoying. So therefore I really like this transmitter over the original one from MGX. But you know the transmitters, it's not very important. Let's have a close look at the cars. A big difference between those two cars are the tires. So with the MGX Hypergo you will get two sets. You will get a set of off-road tires and you will get a set of on-road tires. And that's a big difference. So these tires are, yeah, you have to use them in everything that you want to drive this car. But if you're driving this one on the tarmac for example, then these will balloon a little bit more because the compound is a little bit more softer than these one. So if you want to achieve higher speeds and more grip on the tarmac, I think that the MGX is the, yeah, the clear winner in this case. And especially because you will have two sets of tires. When you look at the bodies, there is a lot of similarities and there are a lot of differences. So the first thing, they are all very rigid and that's always a good thing. And there's another difference and that is the lighting system. So the MGX Hypergo only has got some headlights and this one has got headlights, we've got a roof bar and we've got some tail lights. So with the lighting system, this one is the clear winner. But let's have a closer look at all the electronics. With the MGX Hypergo you will get a 2S LiPo battery or you can choose a different package with a 3S LiPo battery and that's very nice. But if you're driving this one on a 3S LiPo battery, in my opinion it's a bit too fast and therefore it's a bit tricky to drive. So yeah, that's maybe my opinion but yeah, that's what I think about this. So this car will come with a lithium ion battery and I am not a big fan of those battery types. I really would like to have seen that this car would have like a LiPo battery but it is what it is. So let's have a closer look at the other electronics. The first thing I want to mention is that both cars will come with ball bearings throughout, metal gears throughout and metal drive shafts throughout. So that's always a good thing. Another thing are the sharks. So this one has got oil sharks straight from the factory. This one from the factory off has got the friction shark and it's a big downside. But in a separate bag you will get some oil sharks which you need to fill yourself and you have to install them yourself. So at the end you will have both oil sharks with these two cars and that's always preferable. So electronic wise. So the motors are almost identical. I'm not sure about the KVs but yeah if you do the speed runs I think these are just similar to each other. So this one has got a 2 in 1 receiver ESC combination with a 35 amp ESC built in there. So this one has got a separate receiver in this little box and we've got a separate 45 amp ESC sitting right over there. So the steering servo with this one is a 70 grams and I'm not sure about this one but yeah for a 70 gram steering servo this is very very good. So I've reviewed a lot of cars especially with these sizes and normally the steering servos are just too weak but this one has got plenty of power and I really like that. So this one is slightly bigger than that one but also does the job very good so no differences there. Now let's have a close look at the build quality. So both of these cars are built completely different but both of these cars are actually pretty good. So this one has been built on an aluminium chassis and this one has got a plastic chassis. So aluminium is not always better than plastic. So if for example if you crash this one pretty hard then this one can bend and then you can have major problems with the drive shaft. Also when your aluminium has got more weight to it than plastic so it will give more stress on all the components. So plastic isn't always a bad choice. So so let's have a closer look at the arms. So these arms are made from a thinner plastic but the plastic itself is a little bit more flexible and I always like flexible plastic because if you're hitting an obstacle it flexes a little bit and goes into place instead of snapping off. So these arms are yeah, made of a little bit more stiffer material but these arms are a little bit more thicker than that one. So that's a slight
slight different. So the drive shaft, so here you can see the CVD sitting right over there and this one is actually pretty thick and here you can see this one and this one is a little bit more thin. So thin isn't always a bad choice, so the thicker ones will add more weight to the car itself and therefore more stress on all the components and this one is a little bit more lightweight, so that is also a difference. So the main drive shaft right over there, the drive shaft looks identical but this one has got a center uh, brace sitting right over there and this one doesn't have that. So yeah, both of these cars are actually pretty good and I like both of them. So this one will set you back around 100 bucks I think it is and this one will set you back around 150 bucks. So I will put the link down below for both of them. So which one should you buy? Well that's all up to you. That was it guys for this video, thank you for watching, please subscribe to my channel, if you got any questions or suggestions leave a comment below and I will see you in the next video, bye bye.